wrap up chapter two here. It's not a terribly long chapter of thinking like an economist. And we look at uh, economists as economic advisors. And this comes down to, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough because economics is a social science uh, as opposed to, say, chemistry or biology or a hard science. Uh, we have economic models. They have, we have theories. They have theories. Uh, they have uh, biological models. Uh, we're all scientists just of a very different sort. Why? Well, people are crazy. Uh, we're dealing with uh, social issues, again, a dynamic situation, taking a static look at a very dynamic situation. Um, in this course, we're going to look, boop, one little static look at something and see what we can derive from it. But we have to know this very dynamic situation. That's why as you progress in economics, things start to move a little more and mathematics becomes more in place. You start seeing first derivatives and then you start seeing um, econometrics and some pretty sophisticated statistical models so we can move the gears and look at things in motion. Deep breath, you're not in that class. Okay? Economists as economic advisors, they're quite useful because uh, they, they, they can make social predictions about what on average is going to happen. Um, you know, quite quite uh, funny. Uh, Harry Truman uh, once said of, of economists is he was looking for a one arm economist, and someone asked him why. He said, "Well, every economist I talk to as an advisor uh, typically says, well, on the one hand you have this, but on the other hand you have that.' So he was looking for one with just one hand." But it's funny man that Harry Truman. Um, until he's not. But uh, economists are people. Okay, so they have bias. We're human. All right, so number one, we can be wrong, but number one, number two, we can also be biased. So there might be something in our upbringing that makes us value uh, inner city urban development over, say, tax breaks for the rich or, uh, you know, helping out entrepreneurs who have made it so that they can bring other entrepreneurs versus helping people who are n not as aggressive with uh, their portfolios. Um, so there's bias, okay? People have different values. Um, I have a set of values that drive me that might be different from what you do. So if we're both economists, uh, we might feel differently about a problem based on our values. So as human nature um, leads us. Uh, there's perception versus reality, okay? So people have opinions versus what's factually going on, which leads us to our next point in the most important of this video, positive versus normative statements. All right, you're like, well, what does that matter? Um, it matters because it's happening every day to you in terms of the information you're getting, primarily through your news, uh, your neighbors, your friends. Positive statements are factual, okay? Uh, I'm recording this in the afternoon. The sun is shining. I'm looking out the window right now. That is a positive statement. The sun is shining, all right? Tonight, I'll say the sun is not shining. It is nighttime. It is dark. That is a positive statement. Okay, I am positive these are the facts. Write that down. I am positive these are the facts. Why do I say write that down? Because when I was a freshman at Clemson University, that's how I remembered it. I wrote it in the margin of my notes. I remember it like it was yesterday. I am positive these are the facts. It's a factual statement. The sun is shining. And everyone can turn and look and see that the sun is shining. Positive statement. Normative statement is opinionated. Write this down. It's normal to have an opinion. It is normal to have an opinion. Normative statement might be, oh, the sun is shining because a Republican or a Democrat control Congress. All right? Uh, that's an opinion. If you hear someone saying, oh, well, uh, the economy is only struggling because this politician is spending all of our money, or we shouldn't be in this war, those are opinions. Those are normative statements. Now, I want to challenge you. Next time you turn on the news, and I encourage you to turn on the news, if in here I'm going to equip you to be a politician's worst nightmare, which is an informed, economically literate student, I need you to be aware of what's going on. But while you're becoming aware of what's going on, I want you to differentiate between positive and normative statements. I am positive these are the facts. The sun is shining. Okay? I am positive that this politician is in the White House, and they are associated with this uh, political party. Normative statements are opinionated. The sun is shining because this politician is in the White House and he's with this, he or her, um, is with this political party. That's normative. That's an opinion. Oh, we're in a problem in Afghanistan because of this. All right, That's an opinion. Are we in a war in Afghanistan 
Eh, somewhere in between, lukewarm war. Yeah, we got people there. We're at war in Afghanistan. Uh, that's a positive statement. We're, in, we're at war in Afghanistan because uh, George W. Bush's fall. Eh, it's some normative in there. So I want you to start to differentiate between statements that are being made in the news between positive and normative statements. Again, I am positive these are the facts. It is normal to have an opinion. All right? That'll help you remember that. Now, uh, really quickly, just like we did in the, the 10 Principles of Economics in Chapter 1, differentiating between micro and macroeconomics. Macro, which is what you're enrolled in right now if you're watching this video, huge look at the economy. Okay, 30,000 foot view. We're looking at things like unemployment. We're looking at things like GDP uh, and trying to kind of, you know, take the temperature on the economy. Are we doing better? Are we doing worse? What are we looking at? Uh, Wall Street in general. Okay. Microeconomics, micro looking down specifically at individual decisions by firms and individuals. Uh, Nabisco, how many Oreos should they make? Okay. Um, how many employees should this firm hire? All right. So uh, as you progress in economics, and hopefully you'll take microeconomics as well, we're going to look at it at a micro level, individual decisions. Uh, but in this class, we're looking at it in a macro level, which is a broad-based look at the entire economy. And with that, that wraps up Chapter 2. Uh, again, these videos do not replace the reading. There's so much more material and minutiae in between. Uh, make sure you're doing that and getting started on your homework.